Welcome back to the show, back talking to champions. I feel like singing, we are the champions. I, well, not we. Jeff Stovell, Jeff to be Stovell. honest, and his team at Top of the Hill Bakery, winning both the People's Choice and Judge's Choice Awards at the Care for Chocolate Competition. Congratulations. Well, thank Jeff. you so much, guys. Pretty well, exciting. Thanks. So let's talk. You've won now it twice both awards is that right yeah we've swept the competition twice and we've also won uh, another year where we won just the people's choice so we've actually won three years now. right so three people's choice awards and two judges five choice awards. awards that's, that's right. amazing with three entries right. with three entries right. <laughs> so you're doing something right then jeff uh we actually have some photos from the competition we'll ask them to bring some of those up because i think one of the great things too you you make small bites for everybody mm -hmm. at the competition, yep. but for the judges, there's a lot to do, and there are our judges right there, about presentation. Yeah. Absolutely. What kind of thought process did you put in in your presentation? Well, at the end of the day, you want to look at it, you're being an artist, right? And our canvas is now going to be a plate. Mm -hmm. right. um, so you want to look at, you know, the positive space and the negative space. And I like using white plates personally, because just like an mm -hmm. artist with canvas, you want to have that uh, negative space in the background. Yeah. Um, you re really want to make sure that there's some height on the plate, because that's going to give that bit of a wow factor. Right. But at the same time, you want to make sure that there's that central focal point on the plate so that it's not, uh, you know, your eyes aren't competing for different spots on the plate because then right. it looks too busy. Right. Okay. And that's something that a lot of people don't really understand when they're, you know, plating a dessert is, you know, having that focal point and it is, you know, that piece of art. Um, sometimes people just throw things onto a plate and they don't really know what they're doing when it comes to, to that part of the design process. Right. They just figure, you know, if it tastes great, then it's going to be great. But right. There's still a lot more behind the scenes that go into this it. This is yours here, right? That's true. That is mine, yes. Now, was that the small bite that went out? No, that was the judge's uh, plate. That was plate. the judge's, right. That's beautiful. And Thank how you. do you curve chocolate like that? Well, that's uh, the process when we make the chocolate petals. When we temper the chocolate, we actually mm -hmm. use a mold that's uh, normally used for baking baguettes. So okay. it gets that nice arc. Oh, and okay. as it sets up, it sets up in that mold, and that's what's going to hold that uh, shape for the petals. Very how interesting, cool. yeah. That's what really do you, cool. What have you got going over here? We're actually going to make some modeling chocolate today for you guys, just to show okay. you know, a couple different things that we can do with chocolate. This is going to be a great thing to do with kids, especially at Easter time. Right. right. Um, so, hey, why not? It's two ingredients, just like we did last time with the ganache. Yeah. I, I'm famous for my two ingredients. Uh, you know, it's easy to do at home. What we've got in here is seven ounces of white chocolate, mm -hmm. and we're going to melt this down, and we're just going to fold in some, uh, some white corn syrup. Okay. And that's actually going to make it into basically chocolate Play-Doh. Oh, cool. Oh, I Who see. doesn't okay. like Play-Doh? Of course. <laughs> Who doesn't yeah. like Play-Doh? And, and I guess, yeah, to shape it, you'd have to add something in. I always wondered how you how you could work with chocolate. But yeah, so this is this is different than the way that we did it on the uh, the plate for the judges. Right. Uh, for the judges, it was just tempered chocolate, uh, where it's basically just chocolate that we uh, set up in such a way that when it crystallizes, it gets a nice uh, smooth finish and it's shiny. Right. Okay. This is going to be a way to make it almost like a chocolate fondant. So okay. you can cover the outside of a cake with it, you know, a whole bunch of things, like for example. I was going to say, these flowers. We've got a little um, white chocolate rose. I don't know if we can get in on that That's one there. That's beautiful. That's amazing. But this did is all you just do this? this. Yeah, I just did this this morning for you guys. That's insane. Wow. <laughs> so and it's all white chocolate afterwards. So if you want to eat it, it's That's just going to taste you. like white chocolate for you. You can Crazy. wear it and then eat it. Too. That's right. Yeah, right? nice little yeah. bush. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we're going to make today. So okay. uh, yeah, we're just going to get this on here. It's going to start uh, melting for us soon. And this is double boiling, right? Is this is double boiling, it. yeah. Exactly. This is so we don't burn the chocolate. Exactly. You want to have that insulating layer. So we've got the water underneath in the pot, and that's going to insulate. So it's just the steam from underneath that's going to be melting the chocolate. Okay. If you were to put it right into the pan, you're actually going to scorch your chocolate. Chances are you're going to burn it. So when I go to um, Bulk Barn, mm -hmm. they have a whole section of molding chocolate. How is that different from chocolate now that, that chocolate you buy? That's not actually molding chocolate. Okay. It, they call it molding chocolate for whatever reason. I don't know why. It's actually <laughs> chocolate wafers. It's just got higher concentrations of cocoa butter into it, okay. which means that when you melt it down, you don't have to temper it. So that okay. when you're making uh, candies at home, using it for molds and things like that, you don't have to go through that whole process that we do at the bakery to make sure that you've got a nice quality chocolate with a nice shiny finish. Um, so it's kind of like the cheating way of doing chocolate, right. but it's easier for people to do at home because not everybody knows how to temper chocolate. Does it okay. set quickly then because of... No, it actually takes a little bit longer to set. Really? Yeah, and okay. you actually need a fridge to, to set it up, whereas when you temper chocolate, it will actually set at room temperature if uh, ah. you do it right. Right. Interesting. So how does adding the, you said white corn? Yeah, we're going to be adding white corn syrup. So how does that change the, the flavor? It doesn't add any flavor. Yeah. It just makes it a little bit sweeter. Um, but other than that, you're still going to get the white chocolate flavor. It's not really going to change anything from that. Right. Um, the cocoa butter is still going to be the prominent flavor in white chocolate. Okay. And that's what you're going to be tasting. Right. 
Right. Very nice. This is slowly but surely, of I guess, course. warm. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of television. Yes, as we that's slowly right. Slowly watch. Well, it's starting now, to get there. It's starting. To let's talk for a second about yeah. heating up chocolate in the microwave. Yeah, absolutely. Because there is a trick to this, is there not? There is. Yeah. If you want to put uh, your chocolate into a microwave-safe container, um, yeah, you just want to do it in, uh, in small increments. So, right. you know, a little short burst where you're throwing it in for like 15, 20 seconds at a time. Make sure you stir it in between, and you can actually uh, temper your chocolate using the microwave. Uh, believe oh, it or not, really? it's a very quick and effective way to do it. I used to do it when I was working in the restaurant industry. Uh, you know, you'd have to make some quick chocolate, uh, you know, des decoration to put right. onto a plate or pipe chocolate onto a plate to say happy anniversary or whatnot. Uh, and microwave was a quick way of doing that. Okay. And now, but if my friend Allison's watching, I hope you heard that because <laughs> she brought the uh, chocolate fondue for dessert at okay. our, at our yeah, last yeah, dinner. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah, she put that in the microwave for, oh, I don't know, two minutes without Ooh. watching it. Yeah, it was delicious, eh, Allie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. No, it's all a matter of, you know, just uh, like 15, 20 <laughs> seconds at a time, stir in between. Um, to temper it, if you want to do it the real way, um, you're going to melt it till it's about three quarters melted. And then the rest of the, uh, the chocolate pistols, which are what these little chocolate pieces are, they're actually going to stir in, and it's actually going to bring the temperature of the chocolate down and align the crystals. Okay. Now, there's some chocolatiers here in Ottawa. Yes. And some really amazing ones who yep. are doing terrific stuff like Stubby and, uh, you know, there's all... That's right. All he was actually one of the, the judges yeah. at the competition. Right. So, Heinrich. do you use local chocolate, or do you have a preference? Like, you know, because chocolate is like coffee. There's different... There are, but there's no actual chocolate plantations in Canada or in North America, no. unfortunately. But we do um, get our chocolate from uh, North American manufacturers rather than okay. Belgian manufacturers. It's the same company, Barry Calibo. When they manufacture in North America, it's Van Leer. Mm -hmm. It's still the exact same chocolate from the same plantations uh, with the same process. It's just manufactured here in North America. And we really, uh, you know, promote trying to go as local as possible. And for us, Van Leer is the closest that we can get to home. Now, Very Calibo nice. is going to be, I told. I think I oh told you goodness. about this, yeah, the, the chocolate show. hat. So there's right? uh, the fashion show on Thursday at the Hilton Lac Nimi. It's the That's big right. uh, Quebec designer show. And one of the features is chocolate, uh, chocolate, hat. chocolate hats hat. yes. that uh, Calibo and there's a, a bunch of others like the uh, the pastry chef at the casino yep. is also going to be and they're really cute they're oh really yeah, neat. I've seen a, some an of them. Easter they're bonnet really, I know <laughs> literally <laughs> who wouldn't want a chocolate Easter bonnet it that's right so that's at that. four to, to nine and it's free you can four come to along. nine free yep just wear your hat and eat it too. And wear your hat and eat it <laughs> no too. No kidding. <laughs> now, flavor is very important because you didn't just use chocolate in your winning uh, dessert that you did. No, right? we didn't. You, you added what raspberry was a, a small component of it as well? That's right. Uh, raspberry and hazelnut. Right. right. So we wanted to make sure, I mean, chocolate is a very powerful flavor. Uh, it can be overpowering if you don't do it correctly. So we wanted to make sure that uh, when we were using the chocolate, uh, we wanted to balance it out with some other flavors that had some real good interest to them. Mm -hmm. right. um, now, it wasn't just raspberry and the raspberry cream that we put in the center. We wanted to bump that up and we actually put in balsamic vinegar. Ah, oh, now, nice. not everybody that would ever think about putting yeah. balsamic with chocolate, but it goes great together, especially when you use raspberry. No but kidding. just a little bit. Don't go putting. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. You know, don't just go. Well, you know, yeah. he said. <laughs> right? Jeff told us. I'm making chocolates, <laughs> putting balsamic glaze in the center. Hey, why not? But you yeah. have to separate yourself, and that's what Julie was talking about before the show. Was you know when the judges taste, if everything is just that's pure right. chocolate, it gets lost. Right. Exactly. The desserts mm -hmm. all get lost in, in, in itself. And I what don't I'm think doing we're going to have time to do this <laughs> because we've run out of time on oh, it. No. Do you want to stick around sure. and finish it off and maybe we can do a cutback later on yes. in the show? Absolutely. And you can show it how this works. It is getting there. It's getting yeah, there it's eventually. Getting there. Yeah. yeah. This is a temperamental <laughs> stove. Don't go away. We are back with a great local author, Eli Nasralla, back after the break talking about his fabulous book. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with him right after this.